What if I told you that a single event could change the course of history and the world as we know it? This is exactly what happened with the French Revolution. This seismic shift in the late 18th century, from 1789 to the late 1790s, forever altered the political, social, and cultural landscape of not just France but the entire globe. Now let's take a step back and see what laid the groundwork for this momentous event. France at the time was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. The country was burdened with a rigid social hierarchy that heavily favored the aristocracy and clergy. This left the vast majority of the population, consisting of the peasantry and a burgeoning middle class, struggling under the weight of heavy taxation and glaring societal disparities. But it wasn't just economic woes and social injustice that were stirring the pot. A wave of philosophical enlightenment was sweeping across intellectual circles, infusing the public discourse with radical ideas. These enlightenment principles, advocating for liberty, equality, and the rights of man, were not just theoretical musings confined to books and salons, they were sparks that ignited the public imagination, fueling a growing discontent with the status quo. Political disillusionment was another key ingredient in this volatile mix. The monarchy, under Louis XVI, was seen as increasingly out of touch and ineffective in dealing with the country's pressing issues. This sense of disillusionment and frustration served to further fan the flames of revolutionary sentiment. So, there we have it. A rigid social hierarchy, economic hardship and societal disparities, coupled with enlightenment ideas and political dissatisfaction, created a perfect storm. The French Revolution was not a spontaneous event. It was the result of years of simmering discontent and ideological ferment. With the stage set and the elements in place, the French Revolution was ready to ignite. The fuse was lit, and it was only a matter of time before the explosion would shake France and the world beyond. So, with the stage set, the French Revolution was ready to ignite. The spark that lit the revolutionary fire was the storming of the Bastille on July 14, 1789. The Bastille, a towering fortress turned prison, stood as a stark symbol of royal oppression. Its fall signaled the beginning of the end for the monarchy. The storming was more than just an act of defiance against the king's authority. It was a demand for freedom and justice, a call to arms for revolution. In the wake of this monumental event, the National Assembly was formed, marking the first steps towards a new form of government. Amidst the tumult, the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen was drafted. This revolutionary document encapsulated the era's enlightened ideals, liberty, equality, and fraternity. It laid the foundation for a society where power came from the people, not the throne. With the storming of the Bastille, the grip of the monarchy was loosened, and the seeds of revolution were sown. With this act, the revolution was truly underway. As the revolution progressed, the monarchy's authority eroded and power shifted between moderate and radical factions within the revolutionaries. This was a time of great turmoil and even greater change, a time when leaders rose and fell with the tide of revolution. Among these leaders were men like Maximilien Robespierre, Jean-Paul Marat, and Georges Danton. These figures, each in their own way, left an indelible mark on the course of the revolution. Robespierre, the unyielding advocate of the republic and the virtue of the citizen, Marat, the fiery journalist turned politician, and Danton, the charismatic orator with a passion for justice. Their rise to prominence signaled a shift in the revolutionary tide. One of the most significant moments of this period was the execution of King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette in 1793. The guillotine, a symbol of revolutionary justice, brought an end to centuries of monarchy and paved the way for a new era. The king, once the embodiment of French authority, was now a symbol of tyranny and oppression. His death marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new one. The execution of the monarchs was more than just a physical act, it was a symbolic one. It represented the people's rejection of the old order and their embrace of the new. It was a clear message to all of France and indeed to the world that the people were in charge and that the monarchy, for all its power and pomp, could be brought down. But the fall of the monarchy was not the end of the story. It was merely the beginning of a new chapter in the tale of the French Revolution. With the king gone, power vacuums emerged, and radical factions within the revolutionaries moved to fill them. The stage was set for a new era of radical change. The monarchy was overthrown, and a new era of radical change began. The Reign of Terror, 
a tumultuous phase characterized by political purges and mass executions, sought to defend the revolution from internal and external threats. This was a time of intense upheaval, where the revolution, in its quest to uproot centuries-old structures, veered towards a path of radicalism. The Committee of Public Safety, the radical faction in charge, took it upon themselves to steer the revolution through these perilous times. The committee, under the leadership of the likes of Maximilien Robespierre, Louis-Antoine de Saint-Just, and Georges Couton, sought to defend the revolution against perceived enemies, both within and outside France's borders. Their mandate was to safeguard the newly formed republic against counter-revolutionary activities and foreign invasion. As paranoia and suspicion seeped into the revolutionary ethos, the committee instituted a reign of revolutionary justice. A justice whose symbol and instrument was the guillotine, a chilling embodiment of swift and irreversible judgment. The guillotine, often set up in public squares, became an omnipresent reminder of the fate that befell those who dared oppose the revolution. This was a time when the ideals of liberty, equality, and fraternity were enforced with an iron fist. The slightest suspicion could lead to arrest, and an accusation was often tantamount to a death sentence. The guillotine claimed the lives of thousands, from aristocrats and clergy to revolutionaries who fell out of favor. Among the notable victims was the queen herself, Marie Antoinette, and prominent revolutionaries like Georges Danton and Camille Desmoulins. Even the voice of the revolution, Robespierre, couldn't escape the fate he had so fervently championed for others. In a twist of irony, he met his end at the guillotine in July 1794, marking a symbolic end to the reign of terror. However, the effects of this period were far-reaching. The reign of terror had effectively purged the old order, but it also left a society deeply scarred by its excesses. But the excesses of the terror eventually led to its own downfall. The revolution had consumed itself in its fervor, setting the stage for the next phase of French history, a period of moderation and the rise of a new order. The years that followed the reign of terror saw a series of governmental changes, culminating in the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. The downfall of the radical phase marked the beginning of a new era, a more moderate political structure known as the Directory was established. This five-man committee was tasked with governing France, but it soon became notorious for inefficiency and corruption. The Directory lacked the public support needed to govern effectively, and its failures led to a growing desire for stronger leadership. Enter Napoleon Bonaparte. A military genius with a keen political mind, Napoleon exploited the Directory's weaknesses to his advantage. Rising through the ranks of the French army, he became a national hero. His successful campaigns in Italy and Egypt bolstered his popularity, presenting him as a beacon of hope amid the turmoil. In the late 1790s, France was in a state of political and economic crisis. The Directory's inability to address these issues and the looming threat of foreign invasion created a power vacuum one that Napoleon was more than willing to fill. In November of 1799, Napoleon staged a coup d'etat, overthrowing the Directory and installing a new government, the Consulate. Napoleon, as First Consul, held absolute power. His rise marked a definitive shift from the revolutionary principles of liberty and equality to an era of autocratic rule. Napoleon's rule brought stability and order to France. He introduced a number of reforms, including a civil code known as the Napoleonic Code, which remains a cornerstone of French law to this day. Despite his autocratic tendencies, Napoleon was seen by many as the embodiment of the revolution's ideals, a leader who could steer France into a new era of prosperity. But, as history would show us, even the most powerful of reigns can be fleeting. Napoleon's rule, while transformative, was not without its controversies and challenges. His thirst for power and expansion would eventually lead to his downfall, and with it, the end of the revolutionary era. The revolutionary era ended with Napoleon at the helm. The legacy of the French Revolution is profound and far-reaching. This turbulent decade-long upheaval fundamentally reshaped not just France but the entire world, planting the seeds of pivotal principles we hold dear today — democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. It was a time when the notion of liberty, equality, fraternity, took root, forever changing the face of societal structures. From the ashes of the old regime, a new world order emerged, one that championed the rights of the individual and the collective power of the people. Its echoes reverberated throughout Europe, 
sparking subsequent waves of revolutions and inspiring movements for independence and democracy around the globe. The French Revolution was more than a historical event. It was a radical shift in human consciousness, a testament to the indomitable spirit of mankind in the quest for freedom and justice. The French Revolution remains a vivid testament to the power of popular will and the quest for individual freedoms, leaving an enduring legacy that continues to reverberate through the annals of history.